Injuries can happen anywhere at any time. Will you be prepared if you can't get immediate medical help? This video will teach you exactly what you need to do. When you have a burn, unless it is minor, you do not put ice directly on it. After being burned, you should immediately try to cool it down with water or a cool rag. The next thing you want to do is cover the burn with a clean cloth of some sort. This protects it from infection. You can tell if a burn is infected when it develops a white, yellow, green, or black film over the surface of the burn. It can turn black from dead skin cells. Aloe vera helps cells regenerate and heal faster. So if you have a burn, be sure to cut off a segment from the plant and spread the gel over the burned area. If you have a third degree burn where the bone is showing, you may or may not feel pain depending on how much nerve damage there is. Cuts are a very common injury. When you have a deep cut and it is bleeding profusely, do not put on a tourniquet unless the injury is spreading blood and you're assuming that you're going to die from blood loss. A tourniquet may stop the circulation for a moment, but if you keep it on for more than 30 minutes, you may risk having to have the whole limb amputated. Once you stop bleeding, the most important thing to do is protect from infection. When you have an open wound, infection is your worst enemy. Here is an interview with Dr. Jeff Baker. The only two potentially fatal spiders in North America are brown recluses, shown here, and black widows, shown here. The venom of a spider attacks the cells and tissue, causing the skin to first turn slightly red, then develop a hard lump under it. It also becomes severely itchy. Pain from the brown recluse bite occurs around four to five hours later. Nausea, vomiting, fever, and muscle pain can occur after being bitten by either of these spiders. If you suspect you've been bitten by either of these spiders, you should wash the bite site with warm water and soap. You should also apply an ice pack to keep the swelling down. A home remedy for brown recluse bites are nitro patches. The two cheapest methods, a high dose of vitamin C and nitro patches, were the most effective when medically tested. If you have been bitten by a black widow, get medical attention immediately because they are fatal left untreated. There are no effective home remedies for the black widow bites. More people die from lightning strikes every year than they do from snake bites. There is a way to differentiate between non-poisonous and poisonous snakes. Non-poisonous snakes typically have rounded pupils, and poisonous snakes typically have slitted pupils. Poisonous snakes also normally have more arrow-shaped heads, while non-poisonous snakes have more rounded heads. Remember, these are not true in all cases. The poisonous snakes we have in Arkansas are the coral snake, the copperhead, the cottonmouth, also called the water moccasin, and the rattlesnake. Coral snakes have red, yellow, and black stripes. Copperheads are tan with camouflage-type patterns on their skin. Cottonmouths typically have dark-colored back skin and a white or creamy yellow belly. If you are bitten by a snake, you should avoid putting on a tourniquet at all costs. Snake bites swell terribly, and a tourniquet does little to stop the poison. You want to remove any constricting jewelry, such as rings, and tight clothing. If you have been bitten by a poisonous snake, do not drink alcohol or caffeine. This stins blood and weakens the immune system. Do not panic and do not cut the wound, as this only adds another injury. Sucking out the venom is not good unless medical attention is unavailable for several hours. If you do decide to suck out the venom, spit the venom out immediately. Try to keep calm and still in order to decrease heart rate and circulation. If you break a bone, you can make a splint from a sturdy object, such as a stick, ruler, or even a rolled-up newspaper. Slings made from a scarf, a tie, or other material can be used to support the splint. Hold the broken limb above the heart to reduce swelling. Cold surfaces are helpful to the injured area. Resist movement if possible. If the victim of a head injury is unconscious, treat them like they have a spinal injury. Stabilize their head and neck by placing your hands on either side of their neck. Do not move the person's head if the injury is serious. Roll their body to the side if they are vomiting. Contact an emergency operator as soon as possible. If you are alone, yell for help. Do not remove an object protruding from the wound if there is one. Hypothermia occurs when you lose heat faster than you produce it. You can get it when you go outside in cold weather for long periods of time or from being cold and wet. It can make you sleepy, confused, and clumsy. You may not realize that you need help because it gradually affects your thinking. 
The first thing you do for someone with hypothermia is get them out of the cold. Take them to a warm place, inside if you can, and insulate them from the cold ground. Next, if they are wearing wet clothing, you should remove it and apply a warm, dry covering. Make sure you do not apply direct heat. Instead, apply pressure to the center of the body. Do not apply heat to the limbs. Make sure you do not give the person alcohol or massage them. If you stay out in the heat for a long period of time without water, you may develop a heat illness. Symptoms would include dry skin, a rapid pulse, dry mouth, hallucinations, loss of consciousness, confusion, and dizziness. Drinking water or sports drinks will help treat dehydration. If a person is suffering from heat stroke, transport them to a cooler environment, place ice packs under their armpits, and make them lie down. Remember these tips. And if you're ever in a survival situation, they, they might, might just save your life. life.